Now, global conversation, like global citizenship, is a metaphor. It needs, just as the metaphor of global citizenship needs, construal. Obviously, you and I can't literally converse with the other six or seven billion strangers who inhabit the planet, and all of them with each other. Too many conversations. Indeed, let me make the only concrete, practical proposal I'm going to make today, practical at least for someone with a Netflix account, do what people all around the world are already doing uh, with American movies, see at least one movie with subtitles a month. Nothing in the world is pure, uh, our beliefs included, and they don't have to be. I'm much more interested in contamination than in purity. Don't worry about whether or not you believe the right things, even whether you've been taught the right things, whether you have the right identity. Worry if you've only got one identity or one belief that really matters to you. I rode a bicycle through 12 different countries in Europe, which inspired my global thinking. I made the vow at that time that before I died, I would go to every country in the globe. And now there's a problem, which is the number of countries in the globe have doubled since that time. Cosmopolitanism takes in the human world. Naturally, then, it engages with all the human sciences. Thank you. It was, it was delightful. They, they had read... Uh, it's always nice to meet someone who's actually read something you've written carefully, and they had certainly read it carefully, and they asked very good questions, and I thought it was a, a very uh, enjoyable encounter. I like when I visit a campus... Uh, I, I really like spending time talking to students, because that's... Um, you know, that's what a large part of what universities are about is uh, the conversation between faculty and students and between students and other students.